Okay, welcome back. This time out, we're going to complete our passing sighting here. And this pretty much just builds on things that we have done in previous videos, but we're going to include it anyway. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to come over here and we want to make sure we have locked our upper level track layer and our upper level curve layer. So let's lock those two. And now we can't affect them in any way. So let's grab this piece of track down here. And we're going to stretch him out just like that. Then we're going to grab another piece of flex and we're going to put him right here. Now let's pan up here. Now let's put this switch in. Come in a little tighter on that. And we need a number six right hand. So we'll grab that guy, drag him over. And let's set his end point to zero degrees. So he's straight up and down. Because I'm thinking that this track along here is going to run parallel to the edge of the layout. So now we'll just drag him in. And that actually looks pretty good right there. So let's back out a little bit. Now we want to add two more pieces. We're going to put one there. And then for the second piece, what we're going to do is we are going to select him and say add parallel flex. Now we want it to be two inches for our main line. So we're going to put in two inches here and we're going to put it to the left. And there's our other piece of track. So let's complete this little section right here that comes off the uh, diverging track. We'll zoom in. And this is pretty much hit and miss. You just sort of guess. And I'm going to say I'm going to cut the flex right about there. Grab the end, put it on, smooth it. What do we got? Almost 37 inch radius coming off the main line. So I think that's going to be just fine. Let's back up a little bit here. Now we want to put the curve in and we've done this before. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down here and we're going to grab this endpoint and look at his angle and it's 180 degrees. Then we're going to come over here and we're going to look at this angle and it's 101.4 degrees. So we're going to subtract 101.4 from 180 and we end up with 78.6 degrees. So let's drag this down, grab our flex, and we're going to curve it to 78.6 degrees. And I want this inner track to be 26 inch radius. So we'll put in 26. Hit enter. And then we'll spin him around. Now, we're going to set this end to the same angle as this. So we know this is 101.4 degrees. So we'll come up here and we'll copy that. And then we'll go paste it. Hit enter. Now we've got the right angle. So we'll just drag this over. Do quick positioning like that. Come over here. Lose our main image. Go to center line. And let's come down here. Looks like we need to move him up just a tiny bit. So we're going to just click on him again. For some reason, you can't move the track if you have the angle and the XY displayed up here. So I click the track again, and now I can move him. So hold down the shift key, and we're just going to move him up. That looks good right there. Zoom out. Come over here. Okay, we need to move him to the left. Okay, a little jump cut there, because I want to show you something cool. So I tend to like to look at endpoints. And I'm going to show you something I can do here to help line this curve up. I can come in here, and I can look at this endpoint. And I can see that its X is 160 and 4364. So copy that, and come over here and grab the end of your curve, and paste that in. Hit Enter. Now it's right on that piece of track. And on the other end, 
we're probably just going to have to move it up and down. And since we're moving vertically, it's going to stay on this piece of track. If I lined it over here and I moved it horizontally, it's going to go off at an angle. So if you have a straight piece like that, you can line them up like that. All right, let's go in. Let's look down here. And yeah, it looks like we're going to have to move him down just a tiny bit. So we'll hold down the shift. That looks good right there. One last check here. Should not have moved, and it didn't. We'll zoom out. We're going to grab this end piece. Ah, see, it started to fold on itself. So let's, uh, let's cut it a little bit. One thing you could do, if you've got a mess of track here, is I can take it, I can cut it like that. Remove it, pull that out of the way, grab this guy, let him snap into place. And we've got a 522 inch radius, so I think we're okay there. And then we'll do the same down here. We're going to cut right about here. Take that piece, move it there. Hopefully we won't have it start folding in on itself. It might be. Let's see what happens. We got any red here? No. 861 inch radius. So pretty much we got a straight piece of track here. Now let's add our other piece of track out here. So we know this is 26 inches and we have two inch spacing on our main line. So we're going to add another piece of track to the right. And there we go. And that should pretty much be properly aligned. Let's look at it. That looks good there. We can check here. 162 and 43 64ths. Yep, it's right on. So let's cut this guy. And you can see why I'd like an option to be able to cut the flex without having the connection point there because it just adds another step to it. But okay, enough complaining. Let's get rid of that. We'll move that out of there. We'll grab our end, drag it up. What do we got? 6,674 inch radius. I don't know about you, but I'm not going to complain. We'll cut this guy here, get rid of that annoying connection point. Drag it back. 547 inches. I think we're done here. Let's zoom out and see what kind of damage we did. Let's put our image back in and let's go back to looking at it as track. And that looks pretty darn good. Let's clean our drawing up a little bit. And there you go. We've got our passing siding put in. Okay. In the next video, we will add our yard down here and we will put in this little spur here for the industry. We'll see you then.